Welcome back. We are here on Eater looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. And this is going to be my daily forecast for Tuesday, uh, November 3rd, 2020. If you'd like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner. Hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. We have a trading signals um, service on Patreon and people that join that will also get access to our full technical analysis of commodities, uh, the commodities market. So let's start uh, by looking at the US dollar index. And as you can see, we have rallied quite nicely in the US dollar index today. And this, of course, has an effect on stocks. It has, or it says, a negative effect on stocks. It has a negative effect on most commodities and so on. So it's a good idea to pay attention to the US dollar index. However, we should be running into resistance very soon at around the four, uh, 94.73. We should run into resistance. At the, at the moment, we were at 94.29, and then we also pulled back a little bit. If you look at the, the technical indicators for the US dollar index, they are fairly bullish at this point. Um, I would be paying attention to the CCI, because as soon as the CCI is uh, turning around, as it did over here, uh, that means that we are going to fall significantly. Um, there is a lot of volatility uh, right now due to the uh, US elections. And um, whether or not Donald Trump wins or Biden wins, I think that doesn't really matter. There's going to be volatility anyway, because there's going to be a lot of speculation going around and so on. Um, I don't think that Biden will uh, in, uh, produce any... Um, drastic legislation in the, his first months of uh, of his presidency if he wins. And if Donald Trump wins, it's just going to be more of the same. Um, COVID is probably the thing that Biden will focus on first in, in order to get uh, other things going. So there won't be any drastic policy changes whatsoever. But if we break above this high here, we'll go towards the 200 moving average at 96.48. A break below the 50 moving average opens the door to 29, 92.58 and beyond that. So you look at oil. We can see that oil in the beginning of the Monday session gapped down quite significantly, all the way down to 34.33. Since then, we have rallied significantly like we we're up seven eight percent as uh, amazing rally however the main reason for this rally is not the u.s dollar index it should actually be going the other way because there's a negative correlation between the u.s dollar index and uh and um and and oil main reason for this is that a russian uh oil minister has um, said that he's going to contact OPEC and then and then uh, uh, basically introducing uh, talks about um, production cuts and of course that makes this these prices for oil extremely bullish I just don't think that is going to hold OPEC loves to go out and say we're going to do production cuts in reality they never do real production cuts they try to but countries do not want to cut their production because most of them this is their main source of income cutting their production means that they have to they will have less income in their coffin or coffers so it's not a popular thing to do and even though the prices are this low it's not a popular thing to do to basically cut the price but we were if we look at the technical um, aspect of this the news will last maybe one or two days maximum the thing that is here is that we are fairly overstretched to the downside so we're not going to all the way down to 30 dollars uh, at once if you look at the cci we have a lot of gray here similar to what we saw here i would not be surprised if we basically went and tested the 200 moving average which usually isn't that resistant usually when we uh, when we have a rally it just cuts through the 200 moving average like butter so um, so the real resistant is the 50 moving average. So the 50 moving average is going to go this way. And I 
pretty, I'm sure certain that we'll have like uh, three or two um, trading days where with the basically where we rally something similar to this. We rally up towards the 50 moving average or a little bit beyond that, uh, around $40 or something like that, and then we go back to the downside. And this has all to do with the world economy. It's not doing good at the moment. It's not going to go. Gonna do good uh, for a very long time because first of all, you have to get the virus under control, and then you can start producing, consuming as you did prior to the coronavirus. So I'm just waiting to see how far we'll go. And um, looking at these technical indicators, we are we are um, we are in a bullish run that will take probably two or three days. More than probably more than that, five days. On Friday, we'll probably see a little bit of weakness, and then we'll start going back down again. That is what I'm looking for. So, if you look at natural gas, natural gas pulled back quite significantly then, around four uh, percent, and uh, when uh, when it was highest. And at this point, I think that we're going to test, first of all, here at 3.15. And after that, we'll go to here, 3.0. And then we'll go very close to the 50 moving average, probably around 2.9. And then we'll rally again. We are very overstretched in natural gas. The technical indicators are showing that we are going to turn around in this market. Most of MACD, Stochastic the CCI and the RSI are pointing to lower levels. So do expect lower levels, and that is an opportunity to basically buy. I'm no interested in buying at this point when it is when the technical indicators are basically showing that we are about to turn around in this market. So it's buying on the pullback. So let's go and look at copper. Copper has rallied from the 50 moving average uh, a little bit, around 2%. It is pulling back now. There is technically no reason for copper to, uh, to rally at this point. It will probably take a few days before we get uh, through the 50 moving average. We probably will rally a little bit, but, but um, like oil and other major uh, commodities, there's no reason to, uh, for this rally when there is so low demand for these commodities. Um, from a technical aspect, the we were we had been in a decline for more than a week, and that means that we are fairly overstretched to the downside. and And usually, what happens, you have a rally, maybe one or two days, and then you continue your fall. Um, a fall below the fifty moving average opens the door to two point nine, and then to two point eight, and then to two point seven, and then all the way down to two point six. Technical indicators are mixed at the moment. Uh, MACD are, is, trading, uh, is trending underneath the tick signal line. Sarcastic is crossing. Uh, CCI is a little bit bullish. And uh, RSI is technically flat. So no interest in basically buying this. If it falls underneath the 50 moving average, I will be a seller in the copper mark, in copper. So if you look at gold, gold has tried to rally a little bit. But I think this is just going to be a little bit uh, more of the same. Uh, we are going to rally up towards the 50 moving average, and then we'll probably break down from there. Um, if we break the 50 moving average, uh, we will run into major resistance in just above here, in this area here. And uh, if we get through that, then, of course, we'll go to the very highs, to 2000 and 2100. I just think that it is more probable that we fall towards the um, uh, 1800 level before we rally instead of rallying now. Technical indicators for gold are fairly bullish at this point, and that probably means that we're going to test the 50 moving average again, like we did um, only last week. Um, so the further this falls, well, the better it is. Um, that is just getting as much value as possible. And we have tried this several times before. It is probably inevitable that we will go uh, all the way down to 1800 before a um, massive amount of buyers will come in and push this higher because this is a market 
that in the long run is going to go significantly higher. Probably just not right now. So if you look at silver, silver, same thing. We have rallied a little bit. Technical indicators are fairly bullish at this point. So we'll probably head towards the 50 minute week average, but I am also in doubt whether or not we manage to rally above the 50 minute week average. If we do, we'll run into resistance in this area, which we try to get through for a very, very long time. But what I expect here is that we break these lows at 21 and head towards 20 and then rally from there. Um, at this point, we'll probably have one more two, one or two more trading days of where we try to get close to the 50 moving average and then break down from there. I'm just going to wait both in the gold market and silver market because I do expect us um, to go further down. I have no interest in basically shorting this. I'm interested in basically buying this as cheap as possible for the long run. So look at Kakoa. Kakoa continues its drastic fall, and at this point, we are reaching one of the support levels. You can see that this area here was support, this area was support. So if that breaks, then we are going all the way down to 2.0, and that will be our major resistant. I expect a turnaround at this uh, at 2.0, and then we'll head towards the high zero 2.7 again we are trading in between 2.0 and 2.7 and at this point it looks like we are going to break these uh, support uh, area but we can also rally from here we can also turn around and head up towards the 250 moving average i just don't expect us to break those moving averages before we hit these lows technical indicators are well, they're very bearish at this point. You just look at the MACD, you look at the uh, um, Stochastic and the CCI and the RSI. However, when the Stochastic has this break, it is showing that it is about to turn around. And that usually takes one or two trading days. So we'll probably have one more trading day there we uh, go down. Then we'll head sideways for two more days. And then we probably have a... A uh, little rally up to the upside. That is, you just pay attention to what the stochastic does. No interest in basically uh, buying this at this point. I'm waiting till we get all the way down to 2.0 in order to buy. So if we look at platinum, we can see that it's basically the same thing. We have been sticking to the to in between the 50 and the 200 moving average now for basically forever. And uh, yes, at this point, I do believe that we'll rally up towards the 50 moving average. Whether or not we break the 50 moving average, uh, I will just have to see. We need something, a candle similar to this one and another green candle above the 50 moving average uh, similar to this in order to signal that we are going to break above the 50 moving average. Uh, we can see that underneath the 200 minute recovery here, this will act as support. And underneath that, we have an additional area here, which also will act as support. So there's a lot of support underneath. If we get through both of these support areas, then of course, we'll go all the way down to 578. Break above the 50 moving average, we'll go and test these highs again. So you look at sugar. Sugar rallied again today. But we have not broken these highs. And until we do, we are not going further. So bear in mind, we had a nice pullback. This could be basically the pullback that we were waiting for. But we need to break the highs of last week in order to, to go higher. Um, I was hoping that the RSI, for example, was going to fall further. We're only at 67 that means that we're three points away from being overbought. And that just isn't good enough at this point. Uh, we need a um, um, much lower R RSI in order to enter this market for a buy. So we may rally for one more day. That means that the RSI will become uh, higher than 70. We'll be overbought situation. And that means that we are just anticipating 
uh, pullback similar to this. So I hope that we had a major pullback towards the 50 moving average. Hopefully the CCI uh, RSI would go down to 50 and then that will be a really good entry to this market. But we did rally significantly today. But at this point, we need to, to uh, break the top here. Technical indicators are looking very uh, bullish at this point, but pay attention to the RSI. We are overbought. That means that we can pull back just as fast tomorrow as we did today. So if you look at wheat, we can see that we did pull back significantly yesterday. We have rallied today. And this is, I am I'm, I'm hesitating to say that is a, a very encouraging sign. Uh, it is in one way because we are so close to this uh, trend line. I was hoping that we'd basically reach this trend line and then rally. If you look at the technical indicators, they are about to turn around. They're still bearish. So keep that in mind that we could be trading sideways for a few days, um, probably go further down. It would be best if we had tested this uh, um, trend line here and then rally. That would be the best thing. But the RSI is at 52. That is really good. That means that we have uh, room to the upside. So if these ticking indicators turn around, that means that we are going to test the highs again. I have technically no interest in basically shorting this because this will act as support, the 50 moving average will act as support, and these tops will all act as support. And we are in uptrend. So it's just a matter to buy this at a uh, low price as technically possible. So, hope you find this video helpful. You're welcome to support the channel by clicking the subscribe button down in the corner, hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. If you want to see uh, my personal trades, with, with, um, I, you can um, join our Patreon uh, profile and you'll basically get signals when basically I enter the market or leave the market and so on. Good luck and thank you very much.